Hey there everybody, this is Lee with Creative Two Time Mom and today I'm going to be sharing with you what we read in the month of May. So welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, Creative Two Time Mom is all about homeschooling, parenting, and thriving in the day to day. Or in the case of today's video, really good books. It's the end of the month so I am teaming up once again with my good friend April from The Simple Rugged Path and we are talking about what we read throughout the month of May. So I'm going to leave her channel linked down below. I hope you will go check it out. She is another very inspirational homeschooling mama, homeschooling three kids. We have a lot of similarities. So I know if you love this channel, you're going to love hers as well. Like I said, today we are sharing the books that we read throughout the month of May. And in my video, I'm going to share some of my personal reads as well as the books that we read with the kids. If I were to talk about every book that my kids read this month, well, this video would be incredibly long. So I try to focus on my personal reads as well as our family read-alouds. So I read four books throughout the month of May. Three of them were fiction review books, and one of them was a personal biographical read that I've had on my reading list for a really long time, and I just had to make the time to read it this month. So the first book I'm going to talk about is a book called The Tinderbox by Beverly Lewis. Now I have been a long time Beverly Lewis fan, so when this book came up for review I was excited to read it. Some of her books are better than others, and this one certainly was probably right in there with some of the better books that I have read. So this is the story of a young 18 year old woman named Sylvia and her father is a convert to the Amish faith, which is pretty unusual. It would be really unusual for someone to give up all the worldly luxuries and um, conveniences to convert to the Amish faith, but her father has done this uh, very much so prior to her ever being born. And he doesn't talk a lot about his past. However, he keeps this one item in his workshop, and that is a tinderbox. And it is filled with just a few items from his boyhood and his growing up years. So one day, she is cleaning her father's shop and happens to find it unlocked. And she gets a little um, curious. So what she finds in this tinderbox opens up sort of a Pandora's box of events um, leading to some secrets that he has held on even from his wife and from the community as a whole. So it starts to break apart his relationships. So you have uh, the struggle of Ernest, that's the man's name, and his wife Rhoda, and can they piece their marriage back together as some of these secrets come to light? Can he piece his reputation back together because the Amish community is so closely tied? And then you have the story of Sylvia as well, who is kind of grappling with this guilt that she's carrying because she has unleashed this chain of events unknowingly, but it's sort of her doing that has brought all of this to light. So in classic Beverly Lewis style, it is not so much the action or the story that keeps things driven as much as it is the internal struggles of the characters. I feel like that is really her strong suit in her books, is creating these very relatable characters and how they deal with their emotions, how they deal with each other. It's a lot about relationships. So as much as the story has a few twists and turns, it is relatively predictable, but it is that internal dialogue and struggle of the characters and who they will become throughout the book. There was one giant twist at the end of this book. I was reading and going, how can this still go on this many pages? And it was because near the end she throws a curve at you which leaves you hanging to realize this is a part one of at least a two-part series. So while the Tinderbox came out at the beginning of April, I am now waiting <laughs> for the conclusion, which is going to be called The Timepiece, and that is not to be released until September. So, so very much so a classic Amish fiction book, but it definitely hooked me in the end, and I am looking forward to the sequel. The second book was also a review book. It was called Becoming Us by Robin Jones Gunn. 
And if that author's name is familiar, you are right. You probably were a young teenage Christian girl in the 90s. You might remember the Christy Miller series or the Sierra Jensen series, I think is what that one was. This is the story of a young woman named Emily. Her and her husband moved to California to kind of have a fresh start. And as the story goes on, you find out it's not only a fresh start financially, um, but it's also a fresh start relationally because they were very, very closely tied with his family when they lived in the South. Not that his family was bad or anything like that, but they were just so closely tied that they had a hard time developing their relationship and their family within the greater context of the larger family. So they come to California and she happens to stumble upon this group of young women, uh, late 20s, early to mid 30s, and it's about their realizing who they are as young adults, how their relationships are going to flow, what type of families, parents, friends, sisters, uh, neighbors they want to be and so it is all very much so a coming of age story uh, with a twist. You're not looking at who we're going to be as young adults but who we're going to be as women. This book I sort of have mixed feelings about. It is very much so character driven, a lot like Beverly Lewis. The story is pretty predictable. You can pretty much see where things are going um, but it is very much a focus on relationships and that internal struggle and dialogue, again, a lot like the tinderbox. Uh, I think what I struggled with the most is it was too, too light. It really took me back to the Christy Miller series, which was great for a time. It was great as a young adult fiction. But now, as a woman who is raising my own kids and finding out who I am too, I didn't find that the author's voice really matured. Um, the story was a lot like going back 20 years and rereading kind of the same fiction. I think this is going to turn into a series, uh, and so if you're looking for something super light and easy to read over the summer, great to have at it, but probably not my favorite. The third book I read was also a review book. I just posted my full review yesterday on the blog. And this book is called Shine by Chris Gravenstein. Now in this house, we are big fans of Chris Gravenstein, and this is a book that he wrote in conjunction with his wife. You may remember this author's name from previous books that we've read. Mr. Limoncello's Library, Mr. Cello's uh, Library Escape, Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library, that's what it was. Uh, and we really like his storytelling, The Island of Dr. Libris. He is one of those authors that we fight over his books when they come into our house. So I didn't even tell my kids I was reviewing this one until after I had read it. And then I passed it off to my 11 year old daughter and she loved it as well. This is the story of Piper who is your typical preteen girl and now her father has a new job and she is having to completely shift her life over to this prep school where she is working to try and kind of figure out who she is. Her mom um, is a legend in this school and Piper is not musical at all like her parents and so she is trying to find her own way under her mother's legacy. I felt like this was a really good book. We love this author, we love his work and um, this one did not disappoint it at all. The fourth book that I read has been on my to-read list for a very, very long time. And I finally picked up a copy of Different. This is by Nathan and Sally Clarkson. This is mostly written from the perspective of Nathan Clarkson. He's a young man who has grappled with a lot of mental issues in his life. OCD, ADHD, a lot of learning disabilities. And you probably also know Sally Clarkson as an amazing homeschooling uh, legend in the world. And she also shares her perspective of what it was like to find her way, find her relationship, again, the theme this month on my reading, find her relationship with her son while still maintaining, raising the bar of who he could become his abilities, constantly raising the bar for him, while also realizing he was grappling with a lot of 
obstacles that most of us don't face. So this book, each chapter is divided topically, not so much chronologically, but topically, and you hear both voices. Nathan will introduce the chapter and share his thoughts and what he had to struggle through on that topic, and then you get the perspective of the mom who is trying to come alongside him, um, lift him up, and help him function as much as he can in dealing with a lot of these issues. I found this story to be super encouraging. Sally does not sugarcoat a lot of her own imperfections, her own issues, the things that she was dealing with as a parent, and neither does Nathan shy away from sort of the uh, grainier, rough realities of grappling with mental disorder. So if you have a child that you are just struggling to relate to, struggling to love in a way, this is a great book. And it's a great book if you are struggling to understand possibly where a friend is coming with with a special needs child. I felt like this one was really good. As far as what we read with the kids this month, I have three books to share with you. We are continuing on in the Shakespeare Steeler series. This is by Gary Blackwood. We are just finishing up book number two. We should finish it this evening. The kids love it. It is a loose historical fiction version of what it would have been like to travel with William Shakespeare and Lord Chamberlain's men. You are following the perspective of a young um, orphan who has found his way and has become a confidant of Shakespeare. Uh, he is the scribe because Shakespeare has broken his arm and so he's doing a lot of transcription and in this way you see um, just what the time period would have been like. So this has been a great series. We have one more left in the series that we are going to pick up this month. We also listened to two audiobooks in the car. The first one is called Writing Freedom by Pam Munoz Ryan. And this is a historical fiction as well, although a little bit more tightly tied into some historical events. You are following the life of Charlotte, who is an orphan, and she has run away from the orphanage because she realizes they are going to do anything they can to keep her there. She's the only girl on an all-boys orphanage, and they kind of are enjoying the free labor. They know she's not going to get adopted because she's in her early teen years, and they are doing everything that they can to kind of keep her as a slave. So she runs away, and it's all about her hiding her identity because as a young woman at the time, uh, I believe this was sometime in the 1800s, she would have not been able to work, she would have not been able to travel on her own, she would have been found out very quickly. So she covers her tracks, she throws her stuff in the river, tries to make it look like an accidental drowning, she cuts her hair, she becomes Charlie. And it's her story of working her way through the ranks of becoming a stagecoach driver and actually does really, really well. When you get to the end of the book, you find that there were elements in this book that have been found in legal documents. Charlotte is loosely based on a woman who lived as a man at the time because she valued her independence. Um, there are legal documents that show she was one of the first women to vote. She did it under her alias. And it's really interesting to see the things that she had to work around to make her life work and how successful she ultimately was. And the person that the Charlotte is based off of ultimately was very successful as well. This was one of those inspiring, bring to my daughter great role models and say, you know what, with a lot of determination, with a lot of grit and hard work, look what this woman was able to overcome and the opportunities that you now have because of her legacy. So it was really, really good. I did not have high expectations for that book um, and I was completely blown away by how much we all enjoyed that one. So the last book I want to mention was an audiobook that we listened to with the kids and it was part of the Christian Heroes Then and Now series and it was the story of Nate Saint. 
We have been loving listening to these biography stories of Christian heroes throughout history. They start very early on, so you see the progression of Nate Saint's life as a young boy where he was fascinated with planes, he becomes a mechanic, he goes into the Air Force during the war, and because of an old injury, he is unable to fly planes through that route. So it kind of shifts his life to the focus of becoming a missionary, and he knew that he was going into a very, very dangerous situation. A lot of us know the story of the four men who were killed on Palm Beach as they were trying to reach a very violent, very isolated tribe. But throughout this story, you see his perseverance, you see his dedication, you see his passion and his excitement about sharing the gospel with this unreached people group. And at the end of the story, you also see his legacy and the legacy of the men that were killed there and how through their lives, they have inspired so many people, generation upon generation, from the time that they were killed, and how that has exploded and gone into this people group, and now they have, nearly the whole tribe has become saved, come to know the Lord. So, it is a story of a man who gave his life in a way that he could reach people way more through his death than he could have as a missionary. So. Uh, I have to say that out of the Christian Heroes series, this has been my favorite so far. Although I think I feel that way after every book we read. <laughs> so those are all the books that I read throughout the month of May and the books that we read with our kids. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your current favorite read is or your favorite read from the past month. Also, don't forget to check out the description box below for a link to April's channel. She is uploading a video like this one today as well. Don't forget to hit that like button down below and be sure to subscribe before you click off this video. I hope it inspires you and we will see you guys next time. Bye guys.